first and foremost, thank you so much for uh, being with me today. I know you have plenty of choice, um, and I'll promise you now I'm not going to try and sell you anything, all right? Um, so first and, <laughs> first and foremost, um, to give me some context of the room, please could you put your hand up if you've seen my content online or you have some idea who I am or you've actually spoken? Okay, cool. Um, could you also put your hand up if, you ha if you're a recruiter, a manager, maybe in, um, a marketing manager within a recruitment business? Cool, all right. Lastly, before I start, put your hand up if you just want a nice day out of the office today. Yeah, I thought I'd be a few of them. Um, cool, so I'm really excited today to talk to you about why I think all recruiters should invest in their personal brand. And I'm just gonna talk from my own experience and, and what I've learned along my uh, journey. So, I have some goals for this talk today. Hopefully we can achieve these together by the end of it. Um, I really wanna leave you open-minded and with some new ideas to try and do your recruitment job a bit differently. Um, I wanna leave you with some real practical tips that you can start using tomorrow. Um, I would love for you all to start sharing your story uh, by the end of this talk. That would make me very happy. Um, and probably the most important one, hopefully I can try and make you laugh. I don't need to uh, feel like you're back at school in a classroom. So, for me, it, I had um, real humble beginnings. So I'm gonna start by telling you a bit about myself and my story. And when I say humble beginnings, I, I used to be a Domino's delivery driver, all right? I remember that picture like it was yesterday. It was icy, it was cold. The uh, weather conditions weren't great, but I was that guy that still got out there and delivered you a nice warm, hot pizza. So thank God for people like uh, me, eh? So I then uh, worked abroad for two summers. I put Mallorca there, but as you can tell by the picture, it was Magaluf. Um, and besides learning uh, that Brits love to leave their morals at home when they go to places like that. Um, I got my first sales job, which was commission only. It was really hard, but that's when I learned to love sales. Um, after that, I got a bit more fancy. I got a suit and tie on there and I joined an insurance business and then started selling insurance. I then got a bit more fancy, got into insurance recruitment. I worked out how to tie a real knot in my tie and I got a bit more of a fancy shirt on. And, if you look at the picture before I left, I definitely would have aged after leaving recruitment. Um, this is me now at Hoxo Media. As you can tell, I'm in marketing. I think it's cool to wear a fluffy jumper to work. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna talk to you about my time in recruitment. Um, and yeah, so for me, I had a really difficult first 12 months. When I say difficult, I billed 24K in my first year. I was on that 18K basic salary. So before we go any further, put your hand up if you would have fired me if I was in your team. You can be honest. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I probably would have fired myself as well. But I was in a business of eight people. Um, I sat directly next to the owner of the business and I tried and I built 24K. I tried really hard. So at the end of those 12 months, I tried to work out why was I so bad. Um, so I did a bit of reflection. I had one common problem that kept coming up. And that was I couldn't get hold of enough people. But when I did get people on the phone, it wasn't too bad. I could hold a conversation, build a bit of rapport, but I couldn't get hold of enough people. Now, this was still the case, even though I had the nickname in the office of Hisham the Hounder. Now, what did, what did that actually mean? That meant I was this guy. I don't know who you are, but I will find you and I will recruit you, right? I was relentless. I hit the phones every single day, the database, job boards, LinkedIn in mails. I hated that day, the LinkedIn days, Jesus Christ, it was horrible. Um, but yeah, so I was persistent and I gave it a real good go. Plus, this was me really innocent at my stand-up desk. There was a joke internally that if you ended up on the Hisham Azuz to chase list, whoo, there was no going off it until I spoke to you, right? There was no going off it. So it left me asking this question at the end of those 12 months. What else can I do to get hold of the people that I can help. That, that was the question going into year two that I tried to answer. At this point, I was consuming a lot of this guy, Gary V. I was consuming loads of content myself. I kept hearing the word social media. Um, and I was like, you know what? All the people that I'm trying to get hold of, they're, they're definitely on their phones. They're definitely using social media. And what, what I then decided to do was check out what my competitors were doing online to see if they were doing anything differently. Because I thought, if I could steal their ideas and do it a bit better, I was up for that. So this is what I found. Ooh, 
I don't know if I'm gonna get in trouble for this, by the way. This is actually my old competitors, but yeah. Um, I took this screenshot four, six weeks ago, and it looked exactly like this in 2017. So very quickly, if I was to look at your LinkedIn personal page or your company page, would it just consist of jobs? Jobs, 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 jobs. No? Fair enough. I feel like maybe some of you are lying, but okay. Um, cool. So look, I thought, now I knew 12 months in that this didn't work because every single person in my office didn't make one successful placement by posting a job ad like that. So let me ask you another question then. Maybe I'll get some honest answers. Um, who's made a successful placement in the last six months by posting a job ad that looked like that? Okay, no one, right? So it doesn't work. So I was like, why the hell are we doing it? Why are we doing it? So that's what I started asking myself. So the fact that I knew that that didn't work, they were my direct competitors, I thought this was a huge opportunity. I thought if I could use it differently, um, that was gonna give me a really great competitive advantage. So that's what I started to do. So I, set, I gave myself one rule going into to year two, and that was I couldn't post about jobs. I couldn't talk about jobs, all right? Um, so I started to, to brainstorm what could I be talking about. It got cheesy real quick. I was like, right, I'm going to talk about hating Mondays, hump days, and start sharing what I think is important as a recruiter. So what I'm going to do now, actually, before I go on, during this thought process, I had the, the genius idea of getting in front of the camera as well, because I was okay with written words, but I thought the biggest asset I have is Hisham Azuz, and if I could get that across um, in, a, in a video, I think, I think that could go down quite well, and I thought that was my biggest asset, so that's why I wanted to get in front of the camera as well. Now, when I told my colleagues um, about this, this is how they looked at me. <laughs> honestly, they looked at me at complete distraught, honestly. When I come up with this genius idea, I was like, oh my God, guys, let's get in front of the camera, let's do this. They were like, Hisham, what the hell are you on about? That, that's a bit weird. Like, what, what are you on about? That's not gonna work, it's never gonna work. So let me tell you, let me walk through my, um, content journey. So I went through my old LinkedIn posts and you can see how I was slowly but surely experimenting, getting more confident, um, etc. So look, I was this guy. A fantastic opportunity has arisen to join a global leading company. Who is not going to want that job, right? Um, I then started to get cheesy. If you hate Mondays, Hisham Azuz is your guy. Love Mondays again. I think that's actually the new read uh, advert. So yeah, so look, I started doing that. I'm gonna come back to this. This is one of the early Recruitment Roller Coaster podcast episodes. I then took some uh, not so great pictures with my iPhone. This was in the Lloyds of uh, London insurance market. I used to recruit in the insurance sector. I never used to that engagement, 99 likes, 21 comments. And I thought, right, what I'm gonna start doing is just documenting what I'm doing currently as a consultant. So I started taking pictures. Um, this was me and, and my colleagues at a football tournament, which was all insurance professionals. This was me and my colleagues at a learning development course. This was me and my client and two of my place candidates. This was me and uh, a place candidate. And just to stop on that point, I had a lot of success with those pictures. And I know recruiters can't always do that because it, it can be quite political when you take certain candidates out of certain places. But whenever I could, I'd take a, a place candidate out for a drink, I want to build a relationship, make sure that there's going to be no rebate on the cards. And whenever I could, I'd take a picture and I had loads of success there. I've got tons of engagement and tons of inbound messages because my thought process was, if I don't talk about jobs, but people that see those posts, um, they're gonna think he should help me get a new job, right? When they're looking, that was going through my head. So this is when I, I jumped in front of the camera, I told uh, my story, um, and then this was the, the most engaged piece of content I, uh, I put out there, which was interview feedback. 146 likes, 41 comments. And how I come up with that idea was simple. Every single candidate I spoke to on a daily basis would tell me that they had an interview, it was all arranged by a recruiter, they took time out of their day, and then they never heard anything back. Like, we've all heard that, and I really thought that was terrible, so I, I shared my opinion on that. So, just to, what, what I wanted to show there was that I was, I was the jobs guy, right? Um, I started taking pictures, I started being a bit cheesy, and then I, I plucked up the courage to get in front of the camera. So, what I'm just trying to demonstrate there is that if you start, you will build momentum and you will build confidence if you start putting yourself out there. Now, during this whole process, this is, I mean, it was difficult in my office because everyone thought I was a weirdo for that, for that, for that whole year, right? 
They're like, what is this Hisham guy up to? Like, it's not going to make you more money. It's weird. And um, look, I'm, I'm very happy to say that in my second year, I built 120K. Now, I know that's probably what I should have built in my first year. <laughs> but um, look, I wanted to demonstrate that first year, build 24K. Second year, I did everything the same, but I just started to share my opinion and started to put stuff online. Um, I still did, I was still Hisham the Hounder. I still had that nickname, but I had all of the other stuff that was going on. And, I, and it had a direct impact on my billings, right? And at the end of the day, recruiters just want to make more money. And I, that's, what I, that's why I put that in there. Cool. So what I realized at the end of that second year was I built this thing that what we call personal brand, which is a lot more popular these days. So personal branding is the practice of people marketing themselves as their careers, uh, as their yeah, careers as brands. So what if I told you all right now, you already have a, oh, let's go back. Um, what if I told you right now, you already have a personal brand? You all have a personal brand because recruiters work their absolute socks off to deliver a great service, which would mean they're going to get referrals, which would mean they're going to get jobs on exclusive, which means they're going to get repeat business, right? So currently you have candidates and clients that will describe you in a certain way behind closed doors, and that's your personal brand. But it's currently just offline. That's, that's where it's sitting right now. It's in the one-on-one -on -one conversations, it's in the meetings, and you're not talking about it online. So I really wanted to um, hammer on that point that you already have a personal brand. So why should you build a personal brand? Well. I'm hoping that by showcasing that it had an impact on my billings, it actually works. Um, since joining Hoxo Media, um, I've continued to build my personal brand, which they've helped me with. It's helped me win clients at Hoxo Media, right? And these clients are worth a decent amount to the business, all right? Um, so it works, is what I want to say. Now, what, what I really like about the personal brand piece is you can't, you can't be someone else, like it's about you, right? It's about yourself. You can't manufacture likes, comments, engagements. You can't start talking about footballs if you love it, but people know that you don't love it. You can't talk about the candidate experience and you love to give interview feedback if you don't, because what's gonna happen, you're gonna get a lot of these people on your posts. Who are you? This guy doesn't care about the candidate experience. He never spoke to me again after I booked him in an interview, right? So what that means is, the great recruiters who really invest in their personal brand are going to be perceived that way. If you're a shit recruiter and you're trying to manufacture a really nice brand that you care, you really care about your candidates, your clients, your relationships, and you don't, it takes one person to comment on your post and just completely expose you. And that's why I, I think that's a great opportunity because for those great recruiters out there, that's how they're going to be perceived online. Whoa, right. <laughs> So, what's my advice around starting and, and these things? So, you just need to start, guys, honestly. You just need to start. That is the most important thing. Now, I know it's very easy to scroll through your LinkedIn newsfeed right now and think that you need to jump in front of the camera and do all this video content and all that. Have some self-awareness. And what I mean by that is, if you're more comfortable writing, that's okay. That's absolutely fine. You don't have to jump straight in front of a camera. But the most important thing is you have to start in 2019, all right? Trust me, you will reap the rewards if you start. Now, to help me out with my final point, because this, this is my opinion on it, could you put your hand up if last year LinkedIn was in like the top three or the top source of your uh, place candidates, was, was LinkedIn up there, right? It's quite a few of you. So my advice, because when you're like, right, okay, I need to start creating content, I need to do this, it's very easy to be like, I need to be everywhere. I'm gonna start up, set up an Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all this. My advice is double down on LinkedIn. Double down on one place, um, get that right, and then you can learn through that and then go into other avenues if that's relevant to your industry and your market. All right? Cool. So you're up for it. I'm gonna start creating content. What the hell do I talk about? So I think by showing you my um, old posts, I think the easiest way to start is by documenting. And what I mean by that is, right now, recruiters will go out there, they'll network, they'll, they'll try and be involved in the industry. I mean, that, that's what I think a lot of recruiters do. And all you need to do is actually just start documenting that you're actually doing that. As opposed to going to like a networking event like today and not letting anyone know about it, take a picture and, and share why, why you're here, right? I think that's a really easy way to start. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about here is that I think recruiters are in a really unique position 
to create content. And what I mean by that is because you're the middle person between candidates and clients, right? So you get to listen to candidates' challenges, candidates' motivations, and the candidates' opinions on the, on the industry. Likewise for clients. So you, you hear from both sides of, of the fence. So what I'd encourage you to do is start consciously thinking, right, okay, so candidates are really talking about this working from home, work-life balance, that seems really important. I'm gonna share my opinion on that. And likewise with clients, right? So if you're in the middle, you're, you're hearing about common challenges that your market are talking about, start sharing your opinion on those topics. I wanted to include this. Yes, you are entitled to your opinion, but given it's a stupid ass opinion, I've elected to ignore it. And the reason why I've included that is because, as I said, it was really difficult in the early days for me when I decided to do things a bit differently. And if you leave today and you start sharing your opinion and you start creating content, it's more than likely that you'll have some colleagues in the office that are gonna be like, what, what, what are you doing? That's not gonna work. Right, and there's going to be some friction there, and you might be a bit more reluctant to, to, to share your, your thoughts. And for me, I tend to just to shut up. <laughs> it works. And I think what I will say is bring it, bring it back to this talk, right? Say that you listen to this guy, Hisham, who's a terrible recruiter in year one, um, and year two actually really helped him. So, you know what? I'm going, to, I'm going to try. I want to try and be different to my competitors. I want to try and have a competitive advantage. Um, I'm going to try. All right, so that's why I wanted to include that. What if I get negative comments? My old colleague was really bad for this. Um, and I think, it, I think it comes down to, to the mindset piece. I think firstly, from experience, talking from genuine experience, if you have the courage to put yourself up there, get in front of people like I am today, sharing your opinion, you will get so much more positivity than negativity, genuinely. Um, people will love the fact that you're willing to get in front of the camera, they'll love the fact that you're willing to share your opinion and you'll get way more positive comments than you think. Now you will get negative comments, that will happen, that's part of the process, not everyone in life likes you, right? You have people that don't like you, that's just how it is. But when I mention the mindset piece, what I mean by that is what I used to say to my colleague was, it's down to you if you choose to focus on the negative comments or if you choose to focus on the positive comments, right? That, that's down to you. And that, that's what I'd say around that. Now I included this because this came up a lot when I was putting myself out there. You are the worst recruit I've ever heard of, but you've heard of me. So what, what I mean by that is, it comes back, down, it comes back to, that, to that personal piece. The personal brand is about you. So if you know deep down, you're doing a great job, you're doing everything that you can to de deliver a great service, but there's this one negative Nigel comment on your post saying you're shit, you're rubbish, all that. If you're, if you're a good person, you're a great recruiter, that's okay, because you're gonna have 10, 15, 20 people to vouch for that you are actually a good person, you've helped them out and those things, right? So I think if that's the case, then it's not a bad thing that you have another person talking about you, which is why I included that. So this is probably the, the biggest reason why I think people, people stop. Um, you can't share content with the expectation of getting something in return. If you approach it with that mindset early on, you're gonna stop before you've even started. So what I'm gonna to do to demonstrate this point is take you through a bit of a, another little content journey of the, the recruitment roller coaster. So very quickly, put your hands up if you've listened to this podcast or, or you know what it is. Some work to do. Um, <laughs> cool, so this is a podcast that I started when I was in recruitment. Um, as I said, I had a really tough 12 months. Um, it was a roller coaster, that's all it was. I thought about quitting numerous times. Um, but when my friend sold me the dream of working in recruitment, what he told me about was the six figures. He told me about the IB for trips. Um, and he told me that I'd be going on uh, big bill of lunches. That didn't happen. <laughs> so um, this is why I created this podcast, to uncover the actual true failures, the true successes, and the true learnings, what, what goes on in recruitment, right? And early on, right now, it gets well over 3,000 listens a month. Hoxo Media have uh, helped me get it to where it is today, but it wasn't always like that. So early on, episode two, I've got nine likes. I'm just gonna take you through some of the early episodes. Episode four, five likes. Episode seven, two likes. It would have been very easy at this point to give up and, and to stop, and it wouldn't be where it is today. So that's what I'm trying to demonstrate here. Episode 10, six likes, one comment. And then fast forward a bit here, this is in the, the studio at, at Hoxo Media. 40 likes, 10 comments, 40 likes, three comments. 29 likes, 11 comments, etc. You get where I'm going. Episode 40, 43 likes, 13 comments, 10,000 views. So I'm just trying to really labour the point here, guys, that if you keep putting yourself out there, you're consistent. The best way to, 
to compare it to is business development. If you have a terrible business development session and it's the first time you approach it, you still pick up the phone the next day and try again, right? So you, you just got to be consistent and continue to put your message out there and it will get traction, it will get more engagement and you will get more attention. Cool. So what's worked for me during that process? Collaborate with your biggest fans. This is a really quick hack that you can do. If you have um, candidate, you, you all have candidates and clients that absolutely love you right now. Get on the phone to them and ask them to tell, tell the world why they love you so much, right? What that means is instantly is you're in front of a brand new network, instantly. Um, what really helped me stay motivated was when I'd cold call people, when I'd attend networking events like this and I had people tell me that they see my content online, they recognize who I am, that, that, that's, that's a win, right? That, that means you're, doing, you're speaking to the right people um, and you're on the right track. So keep note of those small wins when people recognize you and they recognize your content before you've even spoken to them. And the last bit here is personal branding isn't to replace sales. Like recruiters are great salespeople. You need to stay consistent. You still need to be that, that hounder. You still need to be absolutely on it. But the personal branding part will just help you. It will help the sales side. Excuses. <coughs> Hisham, I don't have the time, I'm too busy, what's actual ROI, I'm too old, I'm not creative, what if my competitors take my clients and candidates? I had all of that, I've heard all of it, right? Um, stop, <laughs> just start with the excuses. I think the most common one, especially in the recruiter's world, is you don't have time. And what I really want this to say is you have time to scroll through your LinkedIn newsfeed, but you don't have time to create content. So very quickly, put your hands up if you spend at least 30 minutes to 60 minutes scrolling through your LinkedIn newsfeed each day. I definitely do, right? There's, there's loads of you in the room with your hand up. So look, that's your new, that's your new content creation hour. It's as simple as that. You've, you'll, you'll read it in loads of business places, audit your 24 hours. So if you think you're too busy, you're not, all right? Cool. Um, what I wanted to demonstrate here is the opportunity. Um, all that was going through my mind when I started to put myself out there was, this is gonna give me a competitive advantage. That, that, I wanna beat my competitors. That, that was all that's going through my head. And now I'm in a position where I speak to recruitment businesses every single day, and there's so many recruitment businesses out there that are still on the fence with this stuff, right? So what I wanna try and encourage you all today is, if you start today, you make the decision that you're gonna start sharing your opinion, you're gonna start creating content, it's gonna pay off. And you are gonna be ahead of your competitors. Because I know it's easy to be online right now and think everyone's doing video, everyone's doing this, but trust me, there's so many people that aren't doing anything. And if they are deciding to get in front of the camera, they're talking about jobs again. <laughs> jobs again. So, basically, especially, look, I, I used to be a recruiter. I'd rather be the person that started and failed but learned along the way, right? Um, you don't want to be the person that next year realises, oh my God, I'm so behind the curve here. We've really missed the boat. Because I think you're going to pull that face. <laughs> <laughs> when you realize your competitors are well ahead of the game, um, it's not gonna feel good. You wanna be this guy, he shows up, laughing at your competitors, right? Laughing at them in the face. This guy looks quite happy, I wanna be that guy. Um, so look, LinkedIn hacks, some practical stuff. If you have the courage to get in front of the camera, you will get more engagement, you'll get more reach. Fact, videos, LinkedIn love videos right now. Um, get as many likes as you can as quickly as possible. What that means is LinkedIn's gonna think it's a valuable piece of content, they're gonna think it's relevant, they think your network's gonna benefit from it. So start a WhatsApp group, start some sort of internal communication where you can post your link to your LinkedIn um, and everyone can like it really quickly, right? Hold them accountable. Tag relevant people in your post. If you tag people in your post, it will get more reach. Now that doesn't mean you can tag anyone. <laughs> tag relevant people, yeah, it can get annoying. Um, always post natively when you can. Or LinkedIn want you to stay in LinkedIn. They pay people very high salaries to work out how they can make you stay in LinkedIn longer. They want you to stay in LinkedIn. Um, if you are gonna post videos, then use subtitles. Obviously, I'm sure you've noticed all the videos start in silence, have subtitles, that means people can read them on the train, on the commute, on their desk, whatever. Um, uh, when you can, post about the candidates you have placed. As I said, that, that really helped me, which is why I wanted to put that in there. Um, LinkedIn automation, there's loads of tools online right now which in, it can just save you time instead of manually having to connect with all the relevant people. It can connect with 50, 75, 200 people every single day, all right? So let me bring this all to life, a little case study for you. Let me introduce you to this handsome chap in the top right-hand corner. I met Dan um, on the podcast. 
um, and we got on, we stayed in, in, in touch, we connected on LinkedIn, he liked what I was doing um, online, um, and he said, look, Hisham, I'd love the opportunity to sort of invest in my personal brand and, and uh, uh, achieve these things. So we, I said to him, you know what, look, I'd love the opportunity to sort of just um, go through this journey with you and see if I can help you anyway, right? So what did we achieve in, in 12 weeks? So before we started giving each other some time, uh, we understood who he wanted to talk to, his, his um, persona and the people that he wanted to communicate to were recruiters. He was a trainer uh, for a, a global recruitment business and he was in charge of the internal recruitment. Um, we had a bit of a plan, so we decided together how much he's going to post each week. Um, I helped him with some content ideas. Um, he was consistent with content every single week. He posted it at least twice a week and I held him accountable. If he told me he was going to post that week and he didn't, I'd blow up his phone and, and give him some grief, right? I held him accountable. So what did we achieve in just 12 weeks? So when we started, he had 2,500 connections. By the time um, we finished uh, giving each other time, he had well over 4,000 plus connections. The highest piece, um, the, the highest engagement on, on his post previously was 5,000 views, 30 likes, four comments. Uh, by the end of those 12 weeks, he'd achieved 70,000 views in one post, 60 likes, 39 comments. That's 39 people that have stopped to, to get involved with his content. I, I think that's great in 12 weeks. Um, opportunities. Previously, he had zero opportunities from his content, uh, uh, from his LinkedIn profile. Like it was all outbound. It was all emails. It was all sliding into people's DMs. That's all he was doing all day. From sharing an opinion and just putting himself out there, he's had the opportunity to train a group of recruiters in Asia and other businesses in the UK. He's had loads of inbound conversations with a number of recruiters all over the world, and he's been invited on a number of. Uh, podcast as well because people want to speak to people who are happy to share their opinions so what I'm trying to showcase here is that that was just in 12 weeks firstly so you can get some quick results quite quickly but once you start sharing your opinion opportunities start coming your way that you didn't even realize existed all right so before I finish I said that I'd love for you all to to start sharing your story so I'm going to try and make that happen now so let's let's all stand up can we all stand up come on let's all stand up Thank you guys, I appreciate it, all stand up. What I want you to do is say hello to the person next to you, I know it's a bit awkward, but get over it. And what I want you to do, if you haven't already, I need you to connect with each other on LinkedIn. Connect with each other on LinkedIn, all right? You just got yourself a brand new network connection. Happy days, easy. Hey. <laughs> Sit down when you've done it, sit down when you've done it and I'll tell you the next part. This is the easy part. Nearly finished, I promise. Amazing, right? You just got a brand new connection, that feels great. So what I want you to do now, all right, I'm gonna give you the idea of, your, of the content that you can share today, right? So the idea is I need you to share your key takeaway from this talk or this key takeaway from today. Hopefully there's something that you can talk about that you've got out of today, right? And what I want you to do is tag the person that you've just connected with. Tag me, I wanna see, I'm gonna help you reach more people. All right, you can do it now if you want. You can take a picture, a video, whatever you want. Um, but if, they, if that person does not do a post in the next seven days, I need you to give them some grief. I need you to get, give them some abuse, right? You said you was gonna post and you haven't. So look, that is, um, that's me. I haven't got time for Q&A, um, but look, I love talking about this subject. I'm happy to help. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, and thank you so much for your time, people. I really appreciate it. Thank you.